Now let's take a look at a real life example of exceptions in practice and I'm going to use the Chili framework and the project twin because I use exceptions pretty uh, extensively throughout here. Uh, so what I do in here, and this is actually something that I don't recommend, I would not do it again, is I define my own custom exception class here. I call it Chili Exception. And all of my exceptions inherit from Chili Exception. And it, it stores a bunch of information. It stores the line number and the file name that the exception was thrown from. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. And it also stores a string, which just gives a kind of note that uh, will get displayed in the case of an error message being displayed. And then it's got a bunch of virtual functions, get full message, get exception type, uh, things like get file, get line. Now the reason why I did this originally was because the standard library exception only works with um, narrow strings, it doesn't work with wide strings. And the Chili framework is very consistent in its use of wide strings. So I decided to make my own exception type. What I should have done is I should have inherited from std exception added my w string stuff but also added the option to return a uh, narrow string by overriding the what function uh, from state exception and that way if the exception was thrown i could catch it with a catch all state exception and display a message uh, if all your exceptions inherit from state exception it makes it easy to catch them and to not miss any and to get useful information when you catch them not just with a dot 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 so, eh, I don't recommend rolling your own exception. I recommend inheriting from std exception and then extending it. But anyways, that's not a big deal. Let's move on. So I've got chili exception here. And then if you go into graphics.h, you'll see I got an inner class in graphics called exception. So this is graphics dot dot exception. And it inherits from chili exception and it implements some stuff in here. It also adds a member uh, variable, the, the h result and that is generally the result from uh, direct X error codes because although we are using exceptions the um, the Windows API does not use exceptions so what you end up doing here is that stuff that I talked about at the beginning of the video you've got to test every function to see if it went wrong and if it did if it fails then I throw an exception uh, and I use a macro to do this, and there is a very good reason for that. Uh, but you can see here, every function here that I, that I call on Direct3D, I am testing the return value, and I'm throwing an exception if something went wrong. And those exceptions are going to propagate up, and generally, uh, they are caught in main here. So I've got a couple of try catches. And this is the main one, try catch, and I try first I try to catch a chili exception. And if the if it's not a chili exception, I see if it's if it's just a standard exception. And if it's not that, then I just catch anything else and display a generic message. Uh, so here is my try catch. Now the reason why I have double try catches inside of each other is because generally I want to call window main window dot show message box to display the error message. But if the main window does not yet exist, if the exception was thrown during the creation of window, I can't call window.showMessageBox. So in that case, I've just got to call the message box function and with a null pointer here. But uh, yeah, that's just a minor detail because I prefer to call win.showMessageBox. But anyways, yeah, so this is where exceptions are caught if they propagate out up into the, uh, the top level of the program. And this ensures that they don't escape the program and crash it. It will show a message with some interesting uh, error diagnostics. Now, graphics.cpp defines a macro, uh, chili graphics exception. And all this does is it expands to a constructor for exceptions. So this just constructs an exception with the return value for the function and the note message, but it also passes in a couple of things here that are specially preprocessor defined macros. These are defined by the compiler and they are the file name and the line number. So the compiler gives you these and the preprocessor will substitute in here uh, the file name and the line number. So by using this macro, when I 
throw an exception with this macro, I automatically get the line number that the exception was thrown from and the file name. So it makes it a lot easier to track bugs. And in order to get this uh, ability, you have to use macro expansion because it has to expand that macro here. If it was a function, it would just give me the line number of the function. And, but I want to be a different line number from every different throw point. So I have to use macro expansion here. But yeah, these are interesting uh, little preprocessor, predefined macros. And uh, this one just converts a string, a narrow string, into a wide string. Also note that these chili exceptions, they're not just displaying this message that I add at the throw point. What they also do is they take this H result value. And if you see here, they perform a lookup. Here's graphics exception get error name. And it performs a lookup of the actual error name string. Uh, so here's it gets error name, get error description. So it performs this lookup conversion from this integer error code into a human readable string. And then it builds all that information together the line number, the uh, the error name, the error string, and the uh, the message that I put in at the throw point, this message here, it puts it all together into one big formatted message. So here you can use your own custom exception types to build very rich and informative diagnostics. And this has helped me out a lot. Like I've had people who have tried to use the framework and they've gotten errors. And normally it would be hard for me to debug their problems remotely from my computer. I don't know what the hell is going on. But because I added all of this diagnostics and all of these throws, I could see directly exactly what line they were having problems on which function call and I could get information about the problem and I could help fix their problems and in some cases help improve the uh, framework so that I could work on more people's programs. Now let me show you one more place in the framework that has extensive use of exceptions. So in the sound, the constructor of a sound, it is going to load a wave from a file. And here a lot of things can go wrong and you want to report a lot of them as exceptions because they're out of your control as a programmer. Some of them are under your control, you've passed the wrong parameters and I handle those with asserts. But for things that are out of your control, we use exceptions. Now one thing that is out of your control is file reading because things can go wrong. Like I said, someone could pull out the USB drive during the middle of a read operation. The file could not exist because the user deleted it from the folder or they didn't uh, extract all the files from a zip or whatever, it doesn't matter. And you want to handle that and you want to notify the user of the error. So the way that uh, streams work in general is they don't throw exceptions by default. Uh, by default, you have to check their error flags after every operation. But we want to use exceptions, so what I do is I create a file, and then I call file.exceptions, and I turn on the exceptions for failure and for bad. Um, this is using OR to to basically combine these options. I'll, I'll talk about this in, the, in a future video coming up soon. But anyways, I use this to enable exceptions for this stream. And now whenever something goes wrong, for example, whenever I try to open the file and it doesn't exist, it's going to throw an exception. And here's my try block. So that is going to be caught. So here's my catches, and here I'm going to catch a sound system file exception and just a std exception. And if I catch my std exception, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild it as a chili sound exception and rethrow that. So instead of rethrowing the exact same exception, I actually take that exception and convert it into my own type and then throw it again with extra information. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so that is how you can use uh, exceptions with things like the standard library uh, streams. You just enable exceptions like this. Uh, and then again down here, if there are problems with the files, I throw chili sound exception if you got the wrong file format or whatever. That is a runtime error. That's not a programmer logic error. That is a runtime error and it should be thrown as an exception. And in general, these exceptions, they get thrown, they propagate up until the main and then they display an error message. But that doesn't have to be the way. And sometimes you can recover from an exception and still proceed and do something meaningful. So in that case, you want to catch it at a lower level. Uh, so let's see where that would happen. So one place where you can catch exceptions and proceed is in the loading of resources. 
like say uh, a sound. So in the sound effect constructor here, I have an option soft fail and it defaults to false. But if you set soft fail to true, what it does is it tries to construct uh, or in place a sound into the matrix of sounds for the sound effect. And if there's an exception, if something goes wrong, there's a catch here. And if we are in soft fail mode, what it will do is it'll just put an empty sound into there. Uh, but if we're in hard fail, it's going to just throw that exception. So here, we can set our sound effects to go to be soft fail. And then if for some reason some sound files don't exist, the game will still run. You'll be missing those sound effects, but you can still play the game. And that could be advantageous. Uh, now what I do here is I check to see if we're in debug mode. Because if we're in debug, that means we're developing, we're not the user. And we want to always know if something is wrong in debug mode. So here, we I will throw regardless. But if I am in uh, release mode, I don't throw in soft fail, I just put an empty sound into the sound matrix. So yeah, there is an example of catching a uh, an error earlier and handling it and not crashing your program. Another example, like I said before, would be you get a disconnection of your internet. Instead of crashing the program, you boot the user back to the lobby and you maybe you try to reconnect to the server then. And that's pretty much all I want to say about exceptions today. Let's review the most important parts, the do's and don'ts of exceptions. So do inherit from state exception. It makes your exceptions a lot easier to catch and handle and to get useful information from. Do use exceptions for errors that happen and that are out of the programmer control. Things like loading files, things like um, network connections dropping, etc, etc. But do not use exceptions for sanity checks. Instead, use a cert for that stuff. Now, you want to throw your exceptions by value. You want to catch them by const reference. You do want to use RAII types like smart pointers, like vectors. You want to use them all the time because if you don't, you're playing with fire, especially if you have exceptions being able to be thrown, memory being able to be leaked. So, But if you use RAII like you should be using anyways, then that's not a problem. Now, you don't want to ever throw an exception from a destructor because that can cause big problems under stack unwinding. So destructors, don't throw them. And you don't want to throw exceptions from a move constructor if you want to take advantage of the optimization of move construction in containers like std vector. So in general, maybe don't throw from move constructors and that will allow your types to uh, handle things better in a container. Now, what you do want to do is you want to mark your functions as no except if you're confident that they will never want to throw, either now or later in development. So if you're confident that this function is never ever going to want to throw, even in sometime in the future in development, mark it as no except. Uh, it's better. It allows the compiler to do some things and for example, for, for the uh, move constructor, it allows the compiler or the standard library to use move construction with your vector. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you should mark just all your functions no except just because they happen to not throw right now because sometime down the road in the future you might want that function to throw an exception so you should think a little bit before marking your functions as no except don't just do it willy-nilly but if you're confident that that function has no reason to throw an exception then definitely mark it no except that's a good thing to do Oh yeah, and one last thing, very big thing, do not use exceptions for flow control. That's a big no-no. Just use them for handling errors that arise at runtime. Now for the homework, I'll do a little bit of homework. Uh, simple one here for Surface. Right now we're only using asserts to handle errors, but I think these should actually be handled with exceptions. So the homework, very simple homework, is just to convert our Surface in uh, our sprite repo to you throw exceptions as appropriate. But that's gonna about do it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button, it helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++.